Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about the var contextual keyword that was added as part of Java 10. The big idea is that this is something called local variable type inferencing. If you're wondering what that is, you've come to the right place. Let's go ahead and dig into IntelliJ and I'll demonstrate how the var keyword works and what I mean by local variable type inferencing. Today's project we'll call var demo. Alright, so first what I want to do is I want to demonstrate the main thing that folks think of when they see a keyword called var preceding a variable declaration. If you have a JavaScript background, previous versions of JavaScript use this. You'd also see this in some other programming languages where you declare var as the type of your variable. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and give this a value of 10 for now. So this is what we typically think of. And what this is, is this is actually called local variable type inferencing. And we've already talked about type inferencing previously in the context of generics, actually. <laughs> so here's an example of where type inferencing is happening. We have our assignment of the value to our variable here, and we're using the angle brackets, but we're not defining the type in here because we already defined the type right here. So in previous versions of Java, you would have to be redundant. You would have to declare the type both in the assignment as well as the variable type declaration, but it's cleaner and more succinct to do this. The concept of the var keyword is to take that even further and have the compiler at compile time determine the type that you want your variable to use. Now, one really important thing. This feature does not change anything about how Java's static typing works. And what I mean by that is Java is a statically typed language, meaning that at compile time, the compiler knows exactly the type of the variable you're talking about, as opposed to something like a dynamically typed language where at runtime you figure out the type of your variable. That's something more like Python that has dynamic typing. Similarly, after this update, Java is still strong typed, meaning that when you are executing your code, you are only a certain set of operations you can do on your type versus weak typing, which is where you can do almost anything you want, but at runtime it checks to see if it's a valid operation. So then you might be wondering, what's even the point of the var keyword? Well, what it does allow for is enhanced readability in certain situations. I'm going to write some code that would be pre-Java 10, and then I'm going to add the var keyword afterward and show the difference. Okay, so this is pre-Java 10. You always have to have the variable type before the name and before the actual value that is associated with that variable. Now I'm gonna convert this same code into post-Java 10. Okay, are you seeing the readability increase? When I look at this, I now have all of my variable types right here, which I don't have any variable types known. They're all just called var. I have the names and then I have the values. For some people, this doesn't improve readability because you can't just look at the first word to determine what my variable type is. But for a lot of people, they really prefer this because now all of your variable names are in sync and you can just look at what all of the assigned values are because previously up here, you'd want to look at what the assigned value is anyway. So the variables actually line up a good bit better from a readability stance. For completeness, I'm going to add in a few more examples of pre and post Java 10 because there are a few other examples I want to showcase with generics and arrays. <laughs> All right, so I added a few more examples here. So as we're used to with pre Java 10, you have to declare the type of the generic, including the type argument, but then you can use type inferencing and not declare the type argument twice with Java 10, you can do this same thing, but you're actually resulting in different code. So this is actually a little dangerous. If I hover over my list, I can see that I have an array list of object here. I don't want that. I want an array list of string. So now I have to include the type argument in my assignment rather than in my declaration. And then you'll notice here that I have to add the new integer array syntax here because I have to tell Java that I'm talking about an integer array and I can't make an array of var and I can't declare the array element here either. So there are a few little gotchas, but it seems like it's doing the job, right? Well, okay, let me show you a few other gotchas. So let's say that I wanna create a string which is null. If I wanna do this, 
how do you think this is gonna work with Java 10? If you hover over, it's giving an error. Cannot infer type because our variable initializer is null. Huh, okay. So one of the restrictions of the var is when you are initializing a variable, you have to have an initializer. And when the initializer is either ambiguous or not present, you can't use it because the compiler at compile time can't figure out your type. So one example is null. Another example would be if you didn't give the variable a value and you just use semicolon at the end. But in the case of local variable type inferencing, it doesn't know what variable type to assign, so it throws up its hands and says, I can't compile this, sorry. And then one more interesting case is let's say that you wanted to have an empty array just to remind everyone that this is how this would work. This code compiles, this code does not. And that's because it doesn't know the type of your array. And this is why you have to include the type of your array when you are using the var keyword. Another thing is that Java does its best to be backward compatible. So the var keyword is really just a contextual keyword, meaning that in certain contexts, it means one thing, whereas in other contexts, it means another thing. In this case, the var keyword is only a keyword when you are defining something like a class name or when you are declaring a variable type. So let's say that you have a variable name named var, which quick sidebar, you need to have good variable names. This is not a good variable name. That being said, this code would still compile. Kind of weird, huh? you have both the var contextual keyword and then you have the var variable name, but this is technically legal code, but again, I wouldn't recommend it. What is no longer legal code as of Java 10 is if you had a poor class name like this. If you hover over here, it says var is a restricted identifier and cannot be used for type declarations. So if the code you're working with has a user defined class name called var, Sorry, you're out of luck. You're going to have to update that as part of Java 10. I don't really have a good solution there, but hopefully you're not in that situation. Another important restriction to understand is that I keep saying local variable type inferencing. And that's because if you were to try to do class variable type inferencing, that's not supported. So for example, this does not compile. In this case, you still have to define string like you would previously. And likewise, if I had a static class variable, that doesn't work either. Or if I have a return value, I can't use local variable type inferencing. So to sum it up, it really comes down to local variables. So all of the variables that go locally within a method are the ones that you can use this type inferencing for. And while I'm on this rant, one additional thing that you can't do with Java var that you can do with some other languages that have similar concepts is there's no way to easily show type immutability. So we use the final keyword when we want to make sure that a variable can never be changed after its value has been set. Some languages offer something like a val keyword or a const keyword versus a let or something like that. Java doesn't have that concept. It only has var. And then if you wanna make sure that your var is immutable, then you would say it's a final var. When this feature was proposed in Java 10, apparently there was a bit of a heated debate among the community on whether there should be a var and a val. In the end, they just decided to use the var keyword rather than var and val or a const or anything like that. If you ask me, that wasn't the right choice. <laughs> I think it would have been a lot better if they had had different keywords for different use cases because data immutability is really strong when it comes to statically typed languages. But in the end, it is what it is and make use of what the language gives for you and work around its limitations, right? While I'm talking about controversial points with this, I want to highlight that the community is a little divided on how var should get used within your code. My general guidance is if you are doing something where the type of the variable is extremely easy to follow, such as when you're using the new operator, you don't want to have to declare the type name twice, especially for a really long class name like this. Use the var keyword. That's pretty much no problem. If you have something where the type is not clear or if the reader has to look at the method to determine the return type, you should be asking yourself what readability benefit you're getting because code is read way more than it is written. 
So you should spend a lot more time writing good code that can be read rather than writing what looks like elegant code as you're writing it because in the end, you're not going to be the one maintaining it potentially. So it's really important to make sure that the next developer can read your code. All that being said, I'm going to demonstrate one use case for VAR that I really do appreciate. In Java 10, this is code for how you create a map that is immutable and you iterate over the map and you print each entry in the map. With earlier versions of Java, you'd have to write a lot more code. Now, I know that readability can be a somewhat subjective science, but if I compare this version versus this version, I much prefer this version. With enhanced for loops, when you're iterating over a temporary type, it's really nice to be able to use var. And then when you've got a really long type name with generics and type arguments, where the type arguments are really clear, it can make sense to use the var keyword here. So bottom line, if you're in Java 10 or later and you're thinking about using var and local variable type inferencing, make sure that whatever you're thinking about, you have readability in mind. The whole goal of this feature was to reduce boilerplate code and to increase readability of code. Don't go away from that and make your code hard to read by trying to substitute everything you possibly can with var. That's not the idea. Instead, what you should think of is, how do I make my code easy to read and easy to maintain? And that was the var keyword as introduced in Java 10. I really, really hope that the language designers reconsider the val keyword. Maybe one of these days the community will push for it and the language will get adapted to include it. We'll see. If you enjoyed today's video, please do smash that like button. If you're enjoying the content and you haven't taken a chance to subscribe yet, please do take it a moment to do that. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you have a good rest of your day and I hope to see you next time. Take care.